Hi everyone, this is a video tutorial to help you understand how to apply the systematic nomenclature rules for naming an alkane with substituents. So the first thing we want to do as always is find the longest continuous carbon chain. That's our parent chain. So if we take a look at this example here, we're just going to kind of move around and count the carbons out that we can find. So we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, moving down this way. I'd have one, two, three, four, five in this direction. So already we know this cannot be the parent chain because it only has five and we've already counted one with six. We could try from here, one, two, three, four, five, six. In this case, going this direction and going this direction are equivalent to one another. So it really doesn't matter which way you choose. So for now, we can assume that we know we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons in our parent chain. So now let's put a name on the parent. So we know that when we have six carbons, we have a prefix of hex. This is also an alkane as it only has single bonds in it. And when you have a compound with only single bonds, it gets the suffix ane. So for now, we know the parent is called hexane. Let's take a look at what we do with all of the things that are not part of the parent chain. Okay, so now let's take a look at the substituents. So as you can see from this picture here, you can tell what a substituent is based on whether or not it's part of the parent chain. So I've boxed out the parent chain, and these two points right here, these are not part of that box. So these would be called substituents. So what I need to do is give the substituents a name. When you're naming a substituent, it's very similar to the parent chain in that the number of carbons gives you the prefix, and the suffix for these guys will be YL. So let's see how we would use that. So over here in this substituent, there's only one carbon. So when you have one carbon, you have the prefix meth. Now, because it's a substituent, we're going to give it the YL ending. So this would be called a methyl group. This one over here is identical. It's also one carbon. So this one here would also be called meth. And because it's a substituent, you give it the YL ending. Let's see how we would locate these in the name. Okay, so now that we have named the substituents, we have one more thing left to do. We need to indicate where in the parent chain that substituent is located. We're going to do that by numbering the parent chain. So as you can see over here, there are two ways that I can number the parent chain, either in the blue fashion where I count one, two, three, four, five, six, or starting where I did with the green numbering, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now obviously one is going to be better than the other. And the rule says that we want to go with the numbering that gives our substituents the lowest possible numbers. So if we take a look at the blue case, this is on a position two, and this one here is on position three. We're going to compare that to the green case where it's position four and five. Because two and three are lower numbers than four and five, we're going to go with the blue numbering. So now let's put all of these rules together and name the compound. Okay, so now before we name the compound, the last thing we need to do is talk about one last rule. In the case where you have multiple of the same substituent, you'll need to use another prefix, either di, tri, tetra, penta, and so forth, in order to indicate how many of that compound you have. It's a little bit redundant, but it's still something that you need to do in systematic naming. So if we take all of the rules we've talked about and apply it, we would get the name 2,3-dimethylhexane. So 2,3 are indicating the locations of the two substituents. Di, because we have two methyl groups, and then obviously methyl, because that's the name of the substituent we have. Finally, we end the name on hexane, because that's the parent chain that we have. So that's how you'd apply all the rules in the IUPAC naming system to name an alkane with substituents.